Hi gang. The laser beam from my T-laser is not visible to the eye. It's ultraviolet light, but when it hits a fluorescent material like this, the material gives off light that is visible. In this video I'll explain fluorescence and explore what else I can light up. First, a little background. Light, as in the light from this T-laser, is in the form of electromagnetic waves, illustrated simply like this. The waves can be characterized by their wavelength. The wavelength is the distance from one peak to the next. In the case of the T-laser, the wavelength is 337.1 nanometers, which is very small. You'd need around 300 of them to make up the diameter of a single human hair. This is the electromagnetic spectrum. That's the set of all wavelengths that light comes in, though this is just a part of it. The T-laser's 337.1 nanometers is here. The visible light that we see with is in this range here, from violet to red, or light with wavelengths from around 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. The range that the T-laser's light is in is called the ultraviolet spectrum. That isn't in the visible range, so we can't see it. And if you look closely, the part of the laser beam outside of this liquid isn't visible. The cells in our eyes simply don't respond to that wavelength as visible light. To emphasize that, we can remove the liquid altogether. Now we see only this spot here. But why do we see that spot? This yellow mark is made with a highlighter pen. The highlighter ink absorbs light in the ultraviolet spectrum, including our 337 nanometer wavelength of light. For this yellow highlighter ink, one chemical compound that's used, and does that, is fluorescein. The electrons in the compound absorb the energy from the light, putting them in an excited state. But they soon relax from that excited state, giving up that energy. Some of that energy is given up in the form of new light, but at a longer wavelength. And lucky for us, its wavelength is in the range of visible light, one we can see, green in this case. This process is called fluorescence. Here it is with ink from a red highlighter pen. And here's what happens with the sticky note. It also works on most white paper, because the manufacturers have added a fluorescent whitener to the paper. Again, its electrons absorb the ultraviolet light, usually in the 340 to 370 nanometer range, and re-emit it typically in the 420 to 470 nanometer range, which is in the blue range of the visible spectrum. Here you can see the laser beam along its length. One way to do this is to open up a highlighter marker. The ink is in this cylinder. Luckily this one is wrapped in plastic. To get the ink out, simply put one end in a container of tap water and wave it around a bit, and do a little squeezing. When the ultraviolet light passes through, some of it is absorbed and then re-emitted as green visible light. I tried tonic water. That worked and re-emitted as a blue light. Normal laundry detergent that doesn't have any whitener or brightener didn't work. Bleach also didn't work. I read that urine fluoresces, but I guess nothing in it absorbs and re-emits the T-laser's 337 nanometer light. It's either that or I haven't eaten the right foods. What I was really excited to try was chlorophyll, which absorbs ultraviolet light and re-emits a red color. To get chlorophyll, I chopped up some nice green spinach. I put it in a plastic cup and poured in some rubbing alcohol. I then poured that through a coffee filter into a second cup. But when I tried it, it looked like it didn't work. At least that's what I thought, until I looked at it from the top. Then I saw this red spot. It was working, but there was probably so much chlorophyll that all the light got absorbed at the very edge. So I made a more dilute solution, one that wouldn't be so thick. This time I could see the laser beam in red. Success. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more neat videos like this. That includes one showing how I made this tea laser, and still on the topic of light, one on how a prism works to give a rainbow of colors, and one on using a Fresnel lens to concentrate sunlight to power a homemade Stirling engine. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you in a bit.